In a previous video, we talked about a 30-60-90 triangle, which allowed us to compute sine and cosine for 30 and 60 degrees. In a separate video, we were able to talk about an isosceles right triangle, that is a 45-45-90 degree triangle, which allowed us to compute sine and cosine of 45 degrees. It turns out there are two other very special, very important angles we need to talk about. That is a zero degree angle and a 90 degree angle. How do you compute sine and cosine of those things right there? Well, if we try to think about it in terms of triangles, we might get a picture that looks something like the following. So we have a right triangle, right? And again, it should be a right triangle, so we'll mark it up right here as a right triangle. Can we make a right triangle for which one of the angles is zero degrees? That seems kind of like a curious thing for a moment, but just let's just go with the thought experiment just for the moment here. What would have to be true if that was the case? You had a zero degree angle. Well, the total sum of all the angles has to be 180 degrees, and a right angle is 90 degrees, and we have zero degrees, so its complement would have to be 90 degrees. So we have a triangle which has two right angles. That's kind of bizarre. This isn't legitimately a triangle here. This would be a degenerate triangle. But just, again, uh, follow the, 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 the thought experiment for a little bit longer here. Let's say that the... Uh, the length on the bottom here is just one, make a standard unit here. Well, if this is a zero degree angle, there's really no space between these things. This would be just collapsed on top of each other, which means this distance here would be zero. Um, in which case, then if we drew this more properly, right, you have this point right here, we have point A, point B, and point C like so. Well, in that case, then really, if we drew this to scale, you'd have line segment a b right here but then because of a zero degree angle you have to draw the line segment again a to c and they'd overlap each other because again there's no distance between b and c right there so the hypotenuse is legitimately the same distance again one and that does match up with the pythagorean equation right notice that one squared plus zero squared is in fact equal to one squared because both the left hand side and the right hand side equals one so, okay, I, I guess I can live with that a little bit. Now, if this is if this were a triangle, then cosine and sine could be computed in the following right, way, right? With respect to a zero degree angle, cos uh, sine, let's do that one first, sine would be opposite over hypotenuse. You get zero over one, which then gives you zero. So sine of zero degrees ought to be zero by this suggestive uh, diagram right here. On the other hand, if we want to compute cosine of zero degrees, we should take the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse, so one over one. So we think that cosine of zero degrees should be one. Um, and then tangent is gonna be then the ratio of these two things. Sine divided by cosine would be zero over one, uh, in which case we then get zero. So tangent of zero ought to be zero. What if we change our perspective now? What if we look at angle C right, and we consider with respect to this 90 degree angle, well, sine should then be opposite over hypotenuse one over one, that is sine of 90 degrees equals one. And then cosine would be adjacent over hypotenuse zero over one. So we see that cosine in this situation is now zero. What about tangent though? Well, tangent should equal sine of 90 degrees divided by cosine of 90 degrees. And by our observations, we end up with, in this case, one over zero. Well, you divide it by zero, and that's not a real number right there. This is undefined. So tangent of 90 degrees ought to be undefined if we accept this sort of fake zero degree triangle business right here. Well, the good news is if you didn't feel comfortable with this thought experiment with triangles, our original definition of the trigonometric ratio isn't based upon triangles, it's, it's based upon points, right? So we really can be thinking of it as we have the x-axis right here, we have the y-axis right here, and then generally speaking, we just take a point in space right there, a point in the plane, and we then form the angle between the origin and this point, that is we take the ray that emanates from the origin to this point, and then the angle in question formed between the positive x-axis, this is our angle theta, and so if this point has coordinates x comma y, and the distance between the origin and this point is r, then we can define the the trigonometric ratio sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, and cotangent using these numbers x, y, and r. So the trigonometric ratios are defined from points. It's just given this angle, generally speaking, we can form a right triangle for which ang angle theta is one of the interior angles to the triangle. There, of course, are some exceptions to this. 
right? I mean, if you think about this, for example, in the second quadrant, right, you have an angle over here, and then your angle theta would be something like this. That You can't make a right triangle with that. So while the right triangle definition makes sense when your angles are in the first quadrant, that is, they're acute, they're between 0 and 90 degrees, uh, these extremal values, that is, uh, the angle 0 degrees and 90 degrees, kind of lead to this funky sounding uh, degenerate triangle. And then when you start getting into larger quadrants, things start to not make any sense with your right triangles anymore. That's not exactly true. This is what we're leading up to with our idea of a reference angle. Turns out that given any any angle, we can always form a right triangle with the exception of the quadrantal angles that is zero degrees, 90 degrees, 180, etc. But again, with respect to points, we can make all we can make sense out of all these things. So what happens when the point is in this case, one zero. All right, so let's move our line right here. Let's put our point to be one zero, one zero right there. So then the ray emanating from the origin going through one zero will be that line right there. Uh, and then the distance between the origin and the point would it's be one. And so using r equals one, x equals one, and y equals zero, then we get that sine is gonna equal y over r which is zero over one, which is zero. We get that cosine should equal X over R, which is one over one, which equals one. And then we get that tangent should equal Y over X, which equals zero over one, which gives us zero right there. Similarly, we could do the same game for a 90 degree angle using the point zero one. In that case, zero one would be this point right here take the ray emanating from the origin through that point, like so, then the angle formed between the positive x-axis and this ray would be 90 degrees. In which case, then again, r is gonna be one, once again. X is this time zero, and y equals one. Then we can do all the ratios all over again. Sine is y over r, so we get one over one, which is one. Cosine is x over r, which equals zero over one, which is zero. And then tangent, again, as we saw, would be y over x, which gives you one over zero, which is undefined, does not exist. So you don't need to have a right triangle to define sine, cosine, and tangent, uh, or the other three trigonometric ratios as well. It's this idea of having a terminal point that determines the trigonometric ratios. But we can connect it to this idea of triangles if we sort of consider these degenerate triangle situations like we have right here, a flat triangle. So if you take the trigonometry of zero degrees and 90 degrees, which we've discussed in this video, and we combine it with the trigonometry of 30, 60, and 45 degree angles that we that we considered in previous videos, we get our so-called special angles. These are angles of extreme importance, and the typical trigonometric student will do themselves a huge favor by memorizing this table. Uh, so if we, we need to memorize what's sine of zero degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, what's cosine of those things, and then what's tangent of those things. So I wrote the sine column, or the sine row, excuse me, right here, out, but I wrote it out in unsimplified format. We saw on the previous slide that sine of zero degrees is zero. Well, I'm going to write that as unsimplified here. I'm going to get the square root of zero over two. What? Why that? Notice the square root of square root of, excuse me, zero over two. This is the same thing as zero over two, which is the same thing as zero, so it's right. And then we're gonna think of sine of 30 degrees as the square root of one over two. Notice the square root of one over two is the same thing as one half, which is what we saw in a previous video. Um, the square root of two over two, this is exactly what we saw when we talked about sine of 45 degrees. Cos or sine of 60 degrees we also saw was root three over two, no worries there, but then Sine of 90 degrees, I'm going to write this on the table as the square root of 4 over 2. Why is that? Well, notice the square root of 4 over 2. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 over 2 is equal to 1. Oh, sine of 90 degrees is equal to 1. We saw that just a moment ago. So all of these values are correct, but this unsimplified form leads to a very simple mnemonic device. Notice what we have here. The square root of 0 over 2, the square root of 1 over 2, the square root of 2 over 2, the square root of 3 over 2, the square root of 4 over 4. Two. So there's sort of like a sequence where it looks like the square root of n over 2, where n ranges from 0 to 4, and you get these five special angles, 0, 30, 
40, 60, and 90 degree angles. So that can help you memorize these, these, these uh, special angles because again, they are critical that you know all each and every one of these. Cosine does the same pattern, but backwards because cosine is the complement, the co-function of sine. So it goes through the same sequence backwards. Sine goes from zero all the way up to one. Cosine, star, uh, it starts at one and goes all the way down to zero. So it does it backwards. So you, here you have uh, zero, one half, root two over two, root three over three, and then one right there. What do you do with tangent? Well, honestly, I don't memorize the ones for tangent. I just have to think about it. Tangents just sine over cosine. So if you take zero over one, you get zero. If you take one half divided by the square root of three, you're going to end up with one over the square root of three, for which if you rationalize that, you get root three over three. Um, at 45 degrees, notice that sine and cosine are actually the same value. So the ratios can equal one, tangents one at 45 degrees. And then at 60 degrees, you get the square root of three. Why is that? You take the square root of three over two divided by one over two, that simplifies just to be the square root of three. And then lastly, tangent of nine degrees is undefined for the reasons we saw before, because it's one divided by zero. And so you get that tangent of nine degrees is D and E. I highly recommend that all the viewers of this video memorize this table as it'll make it much easier for you in the future as you're studying and computing these trigonometric ratios.